and these are all pictures just from from uh, from last month. Um, so I guess you can't see all of it, but uh, just talking about us, us traveling, we went, um, spent almost a month uh, all around Burma, including uh, in, in the camps near Sitwe in Rakhine State, uh, talking to the people in the camps, talking to international NGOs, uh, government officials, uh, civil society leaders, um, and some of the things that you know we found, there's, there's clearly this campaign of hate that's going on. Um, and I think you all know the numbers at this point. Um, but there's, you know, let me see if I can, there you go. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's clearly um, all kinds of, uh, of, of policies against uh, the Rakhine people, against Muslims in general. Uh, we talked about the dehumanization um, and, and the propaganda that goes on. Um, th this was actually taken, this was near uh, Mikhtila, which is another place where um, there's anti-Muslim violence. Um, and you, you just see uh, these prominent uh, people like the, uh, the monk Ashim Urathu who are, are referring to Muslims as, as dogs or African carp who breed quickly and, and, and kill their young. And so this, this is very prevalent. It's going around and you see a, a pattern of, you know, where Urathu or others come to different places and violence follows not very long after. Um, the other part of this is you have the dehumanization, you have this organized pattern. Um, you have the, uh, the 969 stickers um, and, and more recently the use of Buddhist flags uh, to, to indicate in a slightly more subtle way of we, you know, we, you should shop here at Buddhist shops and not at Muslim shops. Um, so this is, um, you know, this is something that's not only happening in Rakhine but elsewhere against Muslims. But particularly in Rakhine, we see a uh, very severe uh, restriction of rights based on identity. Uh, you heard a lot about that already, um, about the uh, restrictions on, on how many children people can have, on, on the freedom to move, to get an education, and, and the list goes on. Um, and then another part of this is that we see um, tens of thousands of people trying to escape on, on boats. And, uh, you know, last year the UN estimated 30,000. Other est estimates are much higher. It's it's tough to say how many people are going. Uh, we know that several of, and then we, we don't know how many or what proportion end up um, in the hands of, of human traffickers um, on on plantations um, or who end up drowning. But uh, it's it's likely at least in the hundreds, if if not higher. Um, then we have the denial of of health care. Um, it was, uh, you know, I think Matt spoke earlier about the um, kicking out of, of Doctors Without Borders and then this mob violence against other international NGOs who had to evacuate and, and haven't been able to, uh, to come back in and, and to ramp up again. So this is, uh, you know, this is on a daily basis, this is causing uh, an unnecessary death. Um, and this is just, uh, you know, another photo about the, the aid getting in is being, um, it, it's less and less because of these uh, evacuations. Um, so there have been some, some very brave people in Burma who have, have spoken out. Um, uh, I believe uh, the, the special rapporteur spoke about uh, several monks that he met who, uh, who are protecting Muslims and speaking out against this. But the, the incentives there are internally. Uh, very little, and the, the, the blowback to people who are trying to speak out against this is very difficult. And that's why um, it's really important um, for the international community to be speaking out and to using the leverage that it has. Um, and, and one final uh, kind of going back to the, uh, the, the warning signs of, of what's going on is one thing that we're seeing and one thing we often see is um, getting rid of witnesses. Um, and in, in, this, in this process, you're not only, over the recent months, it's not only that the health care workers and the aid workers are gone, but you're also getting rid of potential witnesses. And that's particularly important because if you look at the trajectory and the potential uh, triggers of violence ahead of the elections next year, um, the incentives for using hate speech and, and propaganda are going to go up and, and the likelihood that there will be more violence is going up at the same time that the number of potential witnesses is going down. So this is uh, just an example. We're, we're a U.S.-based organization, uh, so a lot of our advocacy is aimed at, at the U.S. government, but also you know, to other governments. It's the same basic message. Uh, we have about 500,000 activists who, who take actions uh, online or, or on the telephone to try to 
create action and we have some of the you know as an activist organization you want to always end with what what can be done what can we be asking and and here's just a few of those things and I'll just highlight the first thing is demanding certain things like allowing Doctors Without Borders to return and other NGOs to have access having having establishing a UN High Commission Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights which by the way President Tencent met with President Obama and originally gave 11 commitments of those we've been tracking them there's really only one that's been fully implemented and one of perhaps the most important one is establishing that office because as I mentioned where there's a real danger of not having the witnesses there and then in terms of getting those demands there is leverage that can be used we've seen the raising of sanctions lifting of sanctions in the interest of rewarding other reforms that have happened but there there should still be certain things like the targeted sanctions the specially designated nationals that can be used there's a lot of diplomatic military symbolic leverage that that is is available as well where if you're meeting with high-level officials particularly military officials like just last month right after all this these evacuations and being kicked out happened you had you had the Secretary of Defense in the US meeting with the Secretary of Defense hosting the ASEAN ministers of defense in Hawaii including the the Burmese defense minister so in a head of ASEAN in November the summit that Burma will be hosting there's going to be a whole line of higher level US officials visiting including Secretary Kerry over the summer and President Obama in November so there's there's a lot of leverage to be had there I'll leave it right there for now but thank you very much glad to have participated